Christina Conrad and I'm here, Foodie with a Life, and today we're going to be making a fig and rosemary jam. So first of all, figs. Figs aren't something that we typically use in the U.S. We're not as comfortable with them. Figs are indigenous to Western Asia and the Mediterranean. So I love figs because they're really jammy inside. And a lot of times, you know, I've been talking to my friends and they don't even know what to do with figs. Well, the beautiful thing about them is that you don't have to do anything with them. You can literally just pop this right in your mouth. But I'm going to show you two different options here, and then I'll tell you why I'm using this instead of this. So this is a Kadota fig, and if you look on the inside, first of all, you want to cut it open when it's ripe. So I'm holding this one, and this one's really firm. It doesn't feel like it has much give to it. This one, on the other hand, almost feels like it's filled with jam, and it actually basically is. So if I cut it open, let's give a little slice here. It has this beautiful, white, soft, juicy center. Oh, it's so sweet. It's so delicious. And this literally has the consistency of like a jam or a jelly. So these are my favorite. They're super sweet. I really like to just eat them just as is. Beautiful uh, alongside like a brunch menu or even just when you're running out the door with a cup of coffee and a fig in your hand. Oh, heaven. Okay. So this guy, this is a mission. This one comes from California. It's a little bit drier. The seeds are a little bit more pronounced. It's not as sweet. You can't go wrong with either one. They're both great. But for something like this, which I'm going to be cooking it down and adding some sugar and some port, this is really what I want to use um, just because it's not as sweet as the Kadota. So this guy starts like this. Super cute. We're just going to cut off the top and then give it a couple chops. So I've done this already, and this is about uh, two cups. So we want two cups of fruit. We're going to be using half a cup of port and then half a cup of brown sugar. So there's our figs. So typically, I want three cups of fruit total, but I had some blueberries around that were kind of starting to go on my counter, so I'm going to add these in instead of an extra cup of figs. So the nice thing about this kind of, uh, kind of jam or compote is that you can add in whatever. If you have a cut up peach or you know your kids didn't finish a nectarine, whatever, just throw it in. It's all gonna cook down. It's gonna be so amazing. So we're gonna put all this together and then I wanted to spice this up. So there's rosemary plants all over my neighborhood. I thought, you know, let's just maybe mix this up a little bit. So I'm gonna chop up just about a tablespoon of rosemary. Give it a nice rough chop because it's gonna stay in the jam and we don't want to end up with like twigs of rosemary. So you don't need too much. This is fresh rosemary. I'm just going to add it into the bowl. Great. We're ready to rock. Okay, so we're going to take this over to the stove and we're going to start cooking. So we're here at the stove. This is the easy, easy part. So I just have half a cup of brown sugar. I'm going to add that into my pot. And then I have half a cup of port. And if you have a really nice old port that you got from your grandpa from 1965, don't use that. Go to Trader Joe's, buy a $10 bottle, and then use all that for cooking. It's just a sweeter, uh, kind of more fortified red wine. So I'm going to add this into my pot. We're just going to turn this up. I want to bring this up to a high simmer because I want the sugar to begin to melt a little bit before I add the fruit. Okay, so I can hear this starting to bubble under the surface. Beautiful, it's ready to rock. So I'm gonna drop the temperature a little bit so it doesn't start to splatter. I'm gonna add my fruit and rosemary just right in here. Get all that goodness. Give it a stir and I just want to coat the fruit and then basically what we're doing is we're cooking the fruit and we're reducing the liquid. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on about halfway, drop the temperature, it's going to come back up to a simmer and then it's going to kind of bubble and cook and all the juices are going to come out and all the flavor of the pork and sugar is going to go in. So you have about 30 minutes, check on this every 10 minutes or so, don't, don't wander too far. Um, because it does have all the sugars, you don't want it to burn, but uh, maybe now's a good time to have a cup of coffee or a dance break. Let me 
Say you have no damn. I got it, you get it good. That's the way that it's gotta be. Take a ride off what I'm reading. So Gorilla Monopoly. They asking what's up with me. Haters can't get enough of me. Humble me, but I'll trust one without. And we're back. And so the figs have cooked down along with the blueberries. And it is this almost jam like consistency. Now, this you could serve alongside a cheese platter. You could do this on top of vanilla gelato. Kind of the world is your oyster on that. But for this purpose, we're gonna use it for breakfast. We're gonna put it on 2% Greek yogurt, it's my favorite. So we're gonna just put a couple spoonfuls of this on top. If you want it a little bit sweeter once you try it, do a little drizzle of honey. There we go. Oh, yum. And then some of the juices in here that's been reduced, some of that poured mixture. And then we'll finish it off, a little slice of our beautiful fig and you're ready to go. So here we are with this beautiful bowl of our cooked figs and blueberries, our Greek yogurt. Just plate some up for me to try it. The rosemary is such an interesting addition here. It kind of takes it from fruit on the bottom yogurt to gourmet. So I'll have a little bite. Mmm, that's so good. So creamy. Really a luscious way to start the day. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Foodie with a Life. Happy cooking!